Okay, we're going to finish our 2.4 notes. We have three more. Our first problem here, we have a table. So you need to find out what's going on right here. I can see right here from the 1.5 to the 3, I would be adding 1.5. But that doesn't work up here. That plusing 1.5 here does not give you 0.75 from 0.3. So we're not adding, we must be multiplying by some number. So I can already tell it's going to be exponential. To figure out what I'm multiplying by, I can make my second value 0.75 and I divide it by my first value 0.375. So it looks like I'm timesing by 2, and I can make sure that works. 0.75 times 2, that gives me that 1.5. 1.5 times 2 gives me that 3. So we are multiplying by 2 every time. So it's exponential. The standard notation for my function is a times b to the x, where a is my initial value. So that means when x equals 0, what's the value? And b is the multiplier. So my function is f of x equals my initial value right here x is 0, my initial value is 0.375, and we're multiplying by 2, that's my multiplier, to the x power. That's my function. Now we need to graph it. So my x values are going from 0 to 3. y values only need to go to 3 as well. It's my highest y value. So 1, 2, 3. We're going to plot our points. 0 to point 0.3, we're right there on the axis in the middle. Over 1, up 0.75, so not quite to 1 yet. Over 2, up 1.5. Then over 3, up 3. And I can tell this is exponential because my graph's starting to curve. That's what we see when we have an exponential function. All right, next one we have a graph. So we're going to start with our table and use these points that we have. So the first point I have on my graph is 0, 7. That goes on my table. The second point I have on my graph is 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, negative 2, and 4, negative 5. So there's my table. I just need to write my function now. So to find my function, I gotta figure out what is happening between these numbers. So 7 minus what is 4? Minus 3. And if I keep going, I can see that works. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And my difference over here is just 1. So these numbers give me my slope, which is negative 3 over 1, or just negative 3. Because I'm subtracting, I know my function is linear. My general form is y equals mx plus b. But as a function, we do f of x equals mx plus b, where m 
is my slope and b is my y-intercept. That means the value when x equals 0. So my function is f of x equals my slope. We just found it. It's the difference in the numbers. Negative 3x. And here's our y-intercept. We see it on the graph right here, too, when we cross the y-axis. It is positive 7. And there's our function. So that's a linear function. All right, we've got one more. We need to recognize this as a linear function where our variable is n. So it's just like what we wrote, except now our x's are n's. So I need to recognize the number by n is my slope. And then my number over here by itself is my y-intercept. I'm going to start with my table. And I'm calling it n and f and, and f of n instead of x and y. But it's the same thing. If you feel better with x and y, change it. y equals 5x plus 10 function notation, y equals mx plus b notation. So to get values for our table, we can put those values in for x or n. So y equals 5 times 0 plus 10 equals 0 plus 10, which is just that makes sense because that's our y-intercept. All right, now we're going to change the x to a 1. So 5 times 1 plus 10. 5 plus 10 is 15. And there we see our slope. That's our change. We're adding 5. So 15 plus 5 is... plus 5 is 25. So there's our table. We just need to graph it. Our x values or our n values go from 0 to 3. And our y values or f of n go up to 25. So I'm going to go by fives because I need to get my line all the way up to 25. Once you have your scale, plot your points. Okay, there's 0, 10, over 1, up 15, over 2, up 20, over 3, up 25. And a linear equation, that's what this is, will make a straight line. 